And here we go. It's game one of the Front Yard Cup Final. Hey, I'm your host, Punchy, and I'm joined by the always wonderful, always well-dressed, flannel-clad Joe Drury. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Punchy. Uh, what an honor. What an honor to be here tonight, be part of the broadcast crew. There's a guy in a Toronto Marley's hat that's um, it's a waving a bunch of directions. <laughs> Autographs later. Autographs later. It's good old Marty. What do you need, buddy? I don't even know if I brought my stuff in yet. Well, tonight's rough tonight uh, on loans from the Auckland Zoo, uh, Mr. Dirty Dave Curtin. Expect a, uh, a lot of tripping calls. He's got, he's got some great gear wear. It is he, good. As he, as he skates around, he has wings around his ears. He must know that we're talking about him right now. <clears throat> Dangerously, he's on the kingfishers as well, <laughs> which is a uh, an ominous sign for... Uh, is he reffing the second game? I believe he's on for the first one tonight. Okay, that's good. Just a casual, casual one-hitter. Okay, that's good. For Dirty Dave and his... Uh, 45 inch elbow pads look at those suckers they go all the way down to his wrist i thought he just had massive arms from jerking off a lot but it looks like <laughs> it's uh, he's got elbow pads underneath that shirt <laughs> is that a boy's small shirt he's wearing as well I, I i do believe it is yeah. i do believe it is as he as, as he gives it a fresh tuck and joining him tonight will be uh mike linehan uh, done quite a few caps as they should say in the big leagues yep and uh, we got him on loan from the zoo as well. Experienced crew tonight, which is good. Absolutely. Oddly, as they look like they might have reverse roles, Mikey in this situation is probably the senior referee, as Dave doesn't call much. No. Dave literally comes out to ref to supplement public skates. Yeah, yeah. He's just out there um, wheeling around and just after what? a bit of a rip on the ice. One of the best chirpers, though, in the league, hands down. So tonight we got Lick Cox and we got the Donkeys. Two teams that are always seem to be in this FHL final. Uh, the Cox are making their seventh appearance and they have one cup to their names. And the, the Donkeys are making their fourth consecutive appearance. What a franchise. After what a franchise. After dropping two to the Rays in the past two years, as you can see, as we look over to the left here, they have one banner remaining on the wall. Yep. And it, as here in the BHL, only there's only room for three years of banners. So in order to keep their spot, they're going to have to win tonight. Tell you what's going to be good is seeing one of those cheese banners fall off there. You know what? Now that I'm gone, I hear you. <laughs> I'm looking for a red one myself. Well, it's been a long time. We were talking about it the other day, not to get into um, too much about the BHL, but... Uh, this well, this the is BHL the finals, it. yeah, is a, is, a, is a repeat of um, was it the second second final or yes, it was the second the second year. Yep. Um, post expansion. Post expansion, we in the second year of the BHL, we brought in two teams. Uh, they were the Toe Dragons and Lefok. Yep. Um, and that very first year, inaugural season, they went all the way to the Cup final. And they swept Les Pilons. Mm. Oddly, all three games were scored four to three, and all three games ended in overtime. And all three games, uh, Justin Daigle had about seven points. Pretty much. <laughs> so he ran away with the playoff MVP. Yeah. And his first of, I believe, four cups in the VHL, possibly three. I think um, I've lost one to him, so yeah, it'll be at least I, three. I was lucky enough to be alongside him for a couple, and then I got dealt and dished uh, last reset. So That happens. Been in the red. We've had a couple tough years. We uh, got ousted in the first round, then we got ousted in the second round, and we finally made it to the dance. So That's that's called progress. It's a, um, <laughs> it's what you'd call a plan. It's a hope and a the, prayer. The that's process, I think it was, uh, people are calling it. Uh, and then the Cox on the other side. The Cox, they went to the first four of the FHL, FHL when, finals, it was, yep. when it was founded. Uh, they went to their very first four. It took them four to get one. And they've been back three, 
three times since and been empty handed each time. So this is their seventh appearance. I guess that would be two. That's bad math, Joey. It's never much strong suit. From a um, from a moosehead slash Swamp Donkeys uh, franchise kind of look, um, you'd be looking at uh, the Frenchman, Pepe Le Pew, Benji Potvin to um, Elder Statesman in his 11th season. Look for a bit of a Finals MVP here, or a, um, a sneaky pickup or a, a roster move just before the trade deadline was um, sending Jason Duff down. That was a very strategic move. I think uh, old Click Clock there uh, yeah. had the brain working. He, Duff ever went down to Queenstown with the B team and uh, had quite the showing down there and uh, I think that secured his, his spot to get tossed down the list <laughs> and oddly become a first liner. Well, it was incredible um, motivation by Tim McKay and Kyle. Whereas um, as soon as he got sent down, he scored about four goals for the Moose. Oh, did he? Yeah. So it was, uh, <laughs> I guess it's one of those like John Tortorella kind of head games things that are. Uh, well, hockey is one of those games where you got to continue to play it. Yeah. In order to continue to excel at it. Well, here we go. We're wrapping up pucks here, and uh, the clock's being set. The tunes are being switched up, and the finals are about to get rolling here. Who are you calling, Joey? Game one. Remember, in the BHL, you got to play the best of three of five. Yep. So there will not the cup is not even in the building tonight. Why would it be? Why would exactly. it be? Exactly. You don't bring that out until you get to at least game three. I'm 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 just hoping for a long series. Honestly, a five game overtime in game five. That's that's what every kid dreams about, yep. eh? <laughs> Growing up playing at a beer league in New Zealand in game five. That's what you want on a Thursday night on, at 9.45. On a live stream at 8, <laughs> 8.30 on a Tuesday. And then I'd be looking for maybe Benji Popman just to hammer one top corner in overtime in game five after he's sent seven wide over well, the net previously. Benji will be our French reporter for the BHL slated game today. Oh, excellent. He'll, he'll be up here joining you, Joey. Um, I will <laughs> regale tales of strip clubs and um, <laughs> numerous other things when in I was... In the old trappers. In the hey la day. trappers heyday. So the starting goaltenders for tonight. The starting goaltenders for tonight. In net for the <laughs> Swamp Doggies. It's Ethan Holland uh, with one of the best mullets in the league. Also moonlights as a referee. And at the other end, we got an experienced vet in Curtis Crosswhite. A little fist of cuffs straight off the top. They dap up at center ice, and the FHL Finals is underway. Bannerman throws one out front, and Holland tries to get it, but it squirts away from him. Heads back to the point to Maxime. Maxime rips one in, and he steers it to the corner. Benji Popman takes a wild slap shot, his first of the night, folks. It's good to see Carl already seagulling out in the neutral zone there. <laughs> oh, and a quick turnover, but Ashley Richmond is on top of it. Solid deep, a good escape. It's a good escape. Probably would have skated it on your own rather than dish it off. Lazowski charges in over the line. He's going to get a yeah. shot, and he scores to open the scoring for the Donkeys. Look at that, number 60, or 96, Mike Lazowski. Well, not to get religious straight after Easter, but the seas just parted like Moses. Yeah, a little bit, little bit of rust on these two teams is... Uh, as you can see there on our telestrator, one team is 6-0. and oh, The other team is 6-1. and one. So a lot of the, they've had a decent break here. Yeah. Maybe that parting of the season is a little bit of rust. But we're, we're going to find out. Speaking of Duff, there he is. Steps by a man. Oh, Gets a second man. shot. And you called it, Joey. That's Look at that. You got Jason Duff 
buries it quick in less than two minutes in. We got a two nothing lead for the Donkeys. Do the Cox call the timeout here? One minute forty five in. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be a little bit? Uh, They're reeling right now. This will be interesting to see if they can come back from this. And again, the Donkeys take control. Just a slight technical issue there. You've still got the live stream in your phone. Um, so we were getting about a 30 second delay replay coming out of your pocket into the back of Ty's head. He was very confused. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, can I hear, what am I hearing? What am I hearing? Oh yes, I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, my bad. Um, if you are watching the live stream, welcome along. Uh, if you can just give us a quick um, quick check on levels, if you are, we're sounding all good. I mean, we're probably sounding terrible, but I mean, the, the audio side of things, the technical side of things, it was... The chat is open, so feel free to roast us as much as you like, or roast any player on the ice. Yeah. If you're watching from far away and you're tuning in for a specific player, let us know who that is. And we we'll can, chirp them for you. We can do a bit of highlight, background kind of uh, analysis. Not play analysis, more just background analysis on people. Oh, and Duff Beer steps over the line again. Oh, and he shoves one to the right. Richmond's going to get it, throw it in on the net, and makes another nice play at the blue line. Oh, and it goes off. It goes off a Roosters defender. And Ashley Richmond, wow, three minutes in, and they're up three. Well, what do they say? Put the puck on the net. And in this game, put the puck on the net, and it probably will go in. It bounced off a... Oh, here we go. They, they're calling a timeout. What did I say? And the timeout is called. At you three, are to it. 3.35. So... 3.35 into the game. There's a timeout to regroup for the Cox. Just put me on the bench, Punchy. I can... <laughs> have, they got, have they got stone pizza here now at Avondale? I do see that. I've they must either that or that's a, just a cool sign. Yeah, that is a very <laughs> cool sign. I uh, actually, you know what? I I did, I did. I had a bite the other night. All oh, right. I had a bite the do other they sell night. It, do they sell it by the slice or like a whole pizza? I think you get a whole pie. I yeah. think you get, you get a whole pie to yourself. It's, it's a little bit. It's probably like a small uh, pizza hut, but it oh, is yeah, quite yeah. tasty. Stone baked is the way to go, folks. What are we? Uh, what are we talking about in flavors? Your your, your typical cheese. You got a bit of a pepperoni. I'm a mushroom guy myself. Oh, like right. I, I, I like the mushroom. Mushroom and, and just mushroom and cheese? Uh, mushroom, cheese, and I don't know, a meat of your choice. Magic mushrooms? If they, if they got pizza like that and they're serving it at Avondale, I will sign up for at least three slices of that. I can imagine you come in for a, an, an Admirals game Saturday night, have a magic mushrooms pizza, and you're still here Sunday. You'd still be on the. You'd still be on the boat. <laughs> you haven't left the rink. <laughs> you'd be on the boat, sleeping in the stand, staring at the bench. Should be beautiful. It's getting very personal with the rusty anchor. So bottom. here we go. What do you think was discussed in the timeout, Joey? Uh, the pizza. I, I don't think it was the pizza. I think it was more. We've we've got to tighten up a little bit here. We've got three shots just walking straight down Main Street. Oh, we got a little bit of pressure there. See, I think I'm looking over at the. At the Roosters bench tonight, and it looks like their top scorer, Drake Farmer, is out. It's probably probably one of our people watching from home. He's probably screaming at the television. Well, there's a good save by Curtis there, and another good keep by Ashley Richmond. Strong D. And they are going to cover up and just get a breather. It seems that the Roosters just absolutely cannot get out of their own zone right now. Uh. Mooner miss, missing for the donkeys as well. Now you do see Spencer on the bench there. He's got his chicken wing set up there, and uh, he's there. Come out to support the boys. A lot, a lot of injuries for the over 45 guys in the in the long playoff run. It happens. It takes its toll on you. You can play up to 15 games in order to win a cup. So right like right now. The Pylons are leading the playoffs, having both their first series go to game five. There's a nice pass to Click Clack. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say there. It's a little bit of a yard sale in the corner. He kind of <laughs> he 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 curtsied, fishtailed, toe He, tried, he tried, to tried to take it from backhand to forehand, 
Because if he'd maybe just shoveled a backhand quickly on the net. It and as we say, he gets a turnover. Steps over the line. And his deja stick fires one into the pads. And it's covered up by Curtis Crossway. Yeah, he's got a good shot with that deja stick, does KK. But um, sometimes you just, you're best to get a quick backhander on net than just try and uh, dust it off and bring it back to your forehand. And Benji Potvin will st step in to take the draw against Jamie Hunter, and Hunter wins it clean. Benji doesn't realize you need to bend over in order to take the face off. No, he just leans on it. And there it is again. Ashley Richmond almost ha puts in another one off a of Cox defender. Oh. Tim Maidman's out front, gives it to Benji Potvin, who makes it 4 nothing, with nine minutes to go in the first. Do they have another timeout? Wow. Well, they could use one. What a start. What a start by the donkeys. Sitting right at the uh, top of the to, crease. You're going to have to ask him about that because that was a, that was kind of a cheeky selly there. A little one foot up in the air. I think he may have lost his balance on the shot. Yeah. But the fact that he didn't wind up right out front, I thought the slap shot might come. Well, I was a, maybe he confused the goalie a little bit. Curtis has played with him a fair bit over the years, and maybe Curtis was waiting for a a typical Off the Benji face. <laughs> <Veggie> slapper <laughs> just right into over the net <laughs> and surprised him a little bit with a, a beautiful little chip into the open net. There's Lazowski who opened the scoring, tosses it over to Richmond. She makes a smart little play and dinks it up. <laughs> Dinks it up. <laughs> uh, Bruford goes off for a change, stepping over the boards. Going back to retrieve this one is Kieran Stewart. Kieran Stewart chips it up the wall to himself. I think it's tucks one into the middle. Pretty, uh, pretty obvious. The two differences in the team. So, oh, good take. What? Oh, we got an offside call. Now he's called oh, him for. Oh, a, he's got a penalty for a hook. Looked like a trip. It's going to be a hook for number nine, Jamie Hunter. Yeah, I was just saying the difference between the two teams is every time the donkeys get the puck, they skate with a bit of emphasis with their head up and looking to make a play, whereas, and they're getting out of their zone very, very easily, whereas the, uh, the cocks are just kind of rimming it around the boards and the donkeys are keeping it in. It's so tough to keep yourself in the game mentally when you go down so quickly by so much and now all of a sudden you're reeling you're, you're, you're frantically making plays exactly what you said you're not keeping your head up a little bit so hopefully the Cox can power through here but missing a bunch of their big guns tonight and that's a nice penalty kill play. oh 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 and, and oh. Ethan Holland completely missed that as he came out of the net and it what's goes the, off the ref what's the old saying Goalie, play goal. <laughs> and he puts his team offside. So with 6.50 remaining in the first, it is a 4 nothing lead for the Donkeys. This line of Potvin, Kaliniak, and his niece, Ariane Goulet. And it's Benji Potvin's niece come over from Quebec. And they'll have Lazowski and Richmond on the point. Goulet puts it back to Lazowski. Lazowski puts one in on net, and Curtis will squeeze that. 50 seconds remaining in the power play. Benji had the big uh, stick of the rafters there, just waiting for a one-timer. Would have been quite a pass to get it right through the seam there to him in the corner. And Popman directs Lazowski, says, this is coming to you. Let's see if he wins it. And he loses it clean. And Jared Parker makes a little play. Bannerman's on his horse. Who's going to win this race? Bannerman gets a shot off. And Holland will squeeze it. And with the running time, that should eliminate the power play. Good kill. Good kill from the Cox. Just get it out of your zone and play down the other end. Ethan looked a little bit shaky every time he's had the puck go towards him like that. Oh, and he put up his glove there and absolutely found nothing. Lazowski makes a little play up to Benji. Benji goes off the wall to click clack. Who overskates it? 
And he comes back and he gets a stick on it. Lazowski chips it up the wall and out. Oh, Ooh. Goulet just missed it. She could have had a break. Benji knocks it off a stick, loses it in his skates. He's close enough to the boards that he goes for a change. And Holland's going to cover up. And with five minutes remaining, it's still four to nothing. What a quick lead they jumped out to. Well, like we said, should they call a timeout after the second goal, they quickly did it after third, and if they had another one, they do it after the fourth. Hey, but you can't, you can't win the FHL Cup in the first period. Oh, that's why the, that's why it is a multi-game series. It's just not, it's just not hockey if it doesn't take a couple games to get where you need to go. How was the uh, the regular season between these two? Going to come to you for stats. Oh, I think it was a uh, three-three in the. Regular well, season play. We do have in this game. We do have the number, the number two and one seeds. Right. The Cox, the Cox did for the second straight year win the Commissioner's Trophy, which is the equivalent to the NHL's President's Trophy as the top league in or top team in the FHL. Is it a curse like it is in the NHL? Mm, I think this team has actually won it multiple times and as I said have won one championship and I believe they have eliminated the curse that year. However in the BHL there's only been one team to ever win what we call the Founders Cup yep. which is the same trophy and it's only been won once and that was by the Pylons in year one. So it's to never go on and win the it's never been it's Nobody's ever raised the cup that's also won the President's Trophy other than the Pylons in Season 1. So that that's an interesting tidbit nope. going nope. into the BHL nope. Final. Oh, and the Cox probably get their best chance of the night there. As I believe it was it Jared Parker was in there making some noise. Yeah, a bit of a turnover by Ashley Richmond, who's looked very solid so far, just... Puck bounced on her. Good pressure from the cocks. A one-time fern. Shout out to our ferns overseas. A tough loss yesterday against Korea. And the next game, I believe, is like 2.30 in the morning? Tomorrow? Question mark? There was a good piece on the news the other day about the, uh, ice hockey in New Zealand. Oh, on one, one news. It's so awesome to see the game growing here. It is the best game in the world and by far the funnest to watch. Oh, 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 and he banks one in off the post, sends it back to the point. There's traffic there. Did he get ben a Did he get a foot, uh, skate on that, maybe? Oh, Bannerman throws a centering pass. Popman winds up. It's kept in at the line by Rainville. Good keep. Rainville's going to step to the middle. It's going to curl back towards the blue line. He throws it deep. Oh, oh and Lizowski loses an edge and goes down. Bannerman comes out of the corner with it. Bannerman's going to take his time. Bannerman curls to the middle. Well, that's it's a Benji taken breakaway. off by Benji. The it's a man. breakaway. We can skate for it. Oh. And he tries three stick lifts, misses all of them, <laughs> and I feel a shift change coming up. Well, he stays out there and oh. gets beaten up the middle. He's hoping for the dash one. Oh, and it's centered to Goulet. Goulet's away. Oh. oh, and she tries to go through, and it's stopped by Matt Beatty. Puts it up to Jamie Hunter. Hunter steps across the blue line. Duff gave him a ride coming through. Hunter's going to get the turnover in the corner. Hunter's come to play. Throws it out front. Hunter keeps it in again. Good shift. A heck of a shift for Hunter. Goulet is able to get it by. He'll, he'll be gassed. And she steals it. She's got Kaliniak with her. Kalinia gets it, oh. drags it. Oh, and Duff can't bury. We got 35 seconds remaining in the first. And Crosswhite will take that one in the glove with 30 seconds to go in period one. Probably just hold on to it there for the for the break. We'll see if we get a draw here. It's it is running time in the first two periods of the BHL. 
And the FA Bill. Is the bar open? Of course. Discounted drinks. Oh, we got oh. a hook. We got a hook with no call. And we've got a... No call, and that's going to be the end of the first period. We have a player down behind the net. Hard into the inboard. Went down hard into the end boards. Can't see the number. Looks like it could be Bannerman. Just hope everything's okay. Yeah, just hope everything's okay there. It looks like he's... Yeah, he's dragging his, dragging his left foot there, but everyone... Giving a good round of applause as he makes his way off the ice. So... 4-0. What a what an opening period for the Donkeys. Cox looked a little bit shell shocked. Came back well in the uh, second half of that period. His punchy's just run off. I think he's going to get some stone baked pizza, or some stoned baked pizza. Interesting to see what. Uh, the Cox team will be telling each other in the intermission. Let's not start as shit as the first period. A lot of time to come back. He yeah, looks like he's skating off that injury. He might, he might come back in this game. Just tuning in on the chat. Uh, welcome along, Bartek. Who's said donkeys? Um, huge appreciation to the comment from Joachim. We can hear your chat. That's all I'll say. Thanks for the live stream. We don't have to turn up to watch, and the Cox don't have to turn up to play. That's a good line there. Cody McKinnon, ha ha ha. Obviously, one of my jokes. Uh, and then Bill Rundle, hashtag Donkey Nation. I don't know if you should be saying that in public. Big crowd already, though. Turned up for this game. Game one of the FHL finals. There's even a dog here, which is quite interesting. Looks like some kind of cavoodle, labrador, labra cavoodle looking thing. Well behaved. Hasn't taken a dump yet. Unless we let it out on the ice. Hopefully it won't take a dump on the ice. Chris Noble is just making his way across the ice to the donkey's bench. Not sure what the hold-up is here. Oh, he might be just going to the bar, actually. Rather than going around the rink, he's just made his way across the ice. That's smart. It's a veteran move from Chris. So, 4-0. Start of the second period. Hell of a first period for the, the Donkeys. Looking to uh, <coughs> win another championship for the Mooseheads Donkeys franchise. As you can see the great moustache of Blake Jackson walking in. Maybe on the ice for the BHL final later on. So I think Punchy's just going to check on the injured player, and he looks like he's okay. He's taking his shirt off. He may be getting helped out of his skate. Help to the first aid tent. It's back in the second period. Donkey's on attack. Shot off the post and goal. Lovely drop pass from Benji Potvin to number 77. 
who sniped it beautifully off the post. Curtis will be unhappy with that. Beautiful shot. Five no. Another another great start to the period for the Donkeys. Hopefully they don't for the Cox fans out there. They don't score four goals in the first five minutes of this period as well. Just pull up my stats here and to see who scored that goal number seventy-seven. Yeah, five no. Anthony Bruford, second of the playoffs. Fairly dominating performance so far. Shot from the point, blocked. Great block there. And we've got another face-off in the defensive zone for the Donkeys as Ethan has frozen it. Hey, you take a look at the shot, 7-12 in favour of the Swamp Donkeys, but five goals on the board. You'd be hoping... Be hoping it'll be a little bit closer than that. Little puck in the crease, puck in the shot behind the net. Cleared away by the Donkeys, up to the point, held in. Held in momentarily, still, no, out now. Into the neutral zone, chipped into the Cox zone. Clearing into him, knocked down by Jason Duff, great play. Keeps the puck in, keeps the puck in again. Another solid play. Cleared out to the neutral zone. Scrappy play, chipped back into the neutral zone near the... Cox blue line. Bit of back and forward tennis like some kind of punishing game of rugby here. Puck's chipped in deep. Clearing attempt almost hits Jason Duff in the face. Should not be good. Fairly good looking man. I don't want to mess up that face. Risking it all with the half visor. No mouth guard either. In come the donkeys on attack, and it's offside. <laughs> 12 minutes to go in the second period. Dominating performance in game one of the FHL final so far by the donkeys. Just every time they got the puck, they got room to move, make a play. And now a little bit of a breakout here from the Cox. 22, in on attack. That is not on my scoreboard. It's 42, sorry. Kill Tomo. But once again, the uh, attack of the Cox is thwarted at the Donkey's Blue Line, although in now. Jared Hunter. Shot on goal. Well, good save by Ethan Holland. And now Mike Litsowski. All the way in. Dishes it off. In front of Benji Potvin. One time in. Second backhand just wide. This top line of the Donkeys has been all over the Cox in the uh, defensive end. Max now, across the blue line, pulls up, passes off, shots blocked. Donkeys recover and a lead pass up and from Benji to his niece, Goulet. Great Canadian name, great Canadian hockey name, Goulet. Nice play there by Stewart, just a pull up and not put his team offside and hold up, not turn it over in come the Cox now again just losing it as they enter the zone clearing attempt by Stewart cut off by Max at the point, chips it across 
Hunter has it, dips it in. Ooh, shot by Cosgrave, just goes wide. And again kept in there, looked offside. Ethan with a save. Duff gets to it, still can't clear it. Puck keeps in, shot on, good save by Ethan Holland. Good battle behind the net, up to the point. Max keeps it in again, looking for a one-timer in front. Bit of a giveaway, and then here comes the Donkeys again. Puck dumped in. Curtis comes out, plays it around. Good play. Shot down, no icing. There's never really icing in this uh, FHL league. Referees just really want to get the game moving and no whistles and no face-offs. They don't like bending over and stopping. Old bones just, just take a while to get going. Up to the point. Good keep by Lutowski. No, it's out. Jared Parker taken away by a great back check by Jason Duff. Beautiful outlet pass and we're in oh, the donkeys. Just rolled off the stick of Will Iodin. Will Iodine. Depending if he's trying to stop his diarrhea. We'll go with Iodine. Another good keep by Lutowski. Lutowski. Monster Zinc Lutowski. As the wall just gives way behind me. Thought I'd actually fallen through the wall. Nope, I'm only 105 kgs, not 125. It's good to know. Just got some alarming news on a work <laughs> chat. Someone is going to the arse doctor tomorrow. It's concerning. But always good to get these, these things checked out. If you've got a concern about your uh, bowel or ablutions, go and get it checked out before you start bleeding from that orifice. There's one place you definitely don't want to bleed from. Shot on from the outside of the zone there. Held on to by Curtis. Good period of play for the football when the Dirty Dave just took a tumble in front of the penalty box there. It's always good when you see a referee go down. No sympathy from anyone. Hello Bartek, good to see you responding on the chat there. Sad to see our uh, Mooseheads season come to an end. With the Loss in the conference finals to the Toe Dragons. I feel like if we'd been able to take it to five games, with a full squad, could have been a very interesting game. But, alas, dominating performance by a couple of uh, Ice Blacks and the Toe Dragons. And they moved on. Play just bouncing back and forth in the neutral zone here. Cox really need to um, spend a bit of time in the donkey's zone. Most of it is being spent in their own zone. Cleared out to central. Lazowski tries to chip it in and get around. The D-man who holds him up nicely. And the Cox are out. Good back check. Though, Holt's play. Iodine turns it over and he's in. And on Curtis. Shot. Saved by Curtis. Rebound there is lying there. And another shot on. And Curtis doesn't really know where it is. But he holds on to it. And a bit of a late poke there by Jason Duff. But he's cleared out of the crease.
Coming up to five minutes remaining in the second period. 5 0 to the Swamp Donkeys in game one of the FHL finals. Just calculating how long it's going to take me to get from here across to the bar and in the intermission. Do you reckon I could do it in. Intermission is one minute, 60 seconds. I reckon I could. I can do the Chris Noble across the ice. I think I could make it. Ty, what do you reckon? Do you reckon I could get to the bar in the intermission? He's given me nothing. Puck turned over. Goulet now into the fuck zone. Oh, that's not the fucks. That's the Cox. Sorry. FHL team for the Fox. Well, you see Punchy walking around. He hasn't been to the bar, which is a little bit disappointing. But it looks like the injured player is still in the first aid. Hopefully everything's all right. Puck dumped in. See a lot of the BHL players shot off the netting. Then it stays up in the netting, so we'll get a face-off. Going to take a big third period for the. Uh, oh, the goalie's coming. Curtis has stormed the face-off circle. He's giving Kyle a little bit of shit about missing that shot earlier, and then blowing a tire and just cartwheeling into the inboard. I would be also giving Kyle the same grief about that disgraceful play. Chipped out. Nice play to chip it out of the zone. Got a great back check by Jason, Jason Duff and a good pull up, and again. Breaking a couple of ankles. Uh, over skates it as he's trying to enter the zone. A a fan favorite here, Jason. Oh, shot on. Good shot by Hunter. Good save by Ethan. Shot th back through the crease. Punchy's got a grimace on his face. Yeah, he's made a br he's made a breaking motion, so that's a broken ankle. Oh, bad news! We've got a broken ankle to uh, the Cox player who went into the inboards at the end of the first period. That is not good news. That's not what you want on a Tuesday night. Work tomorrow. Probably won't be going to work tomorrow. So he'll be on ACC for a very long time. Broken ankle, that's probably three months recovery. Squeak it out for four. Get on some good pain medication. Wondering if they have a green whistle in the first aid. Otherwise, that would be very uncomfortable trying to get that skate off with a broken ankle. That's where you want the green whistle. Yes. Hoovering up that. Fox, uh, the Cox keep it in. Richmond with the breakout. Turn over again though. Benji seagulling at the uh, Cox blue line looking for a stretch pass. Didn't get it. Called for it. Didn't get it. And now they're in. Cox in on the left-hand side, looking to center it. Played it in. Good play by Richmond, just to push it back to a goalie. Ethan freezes it. As we wind down to the final 30 seconds of the second period, Swam Donkeys lead 5-0. Five goals on just 15 shots. The Cox have fired 12 shots at uh, Ethan, and he's, I don't want to say it, Shot deflected just wide. Put back out in front. 
Deflected away. Shot from the point wide. Back up to the point. Max looks to chip it in front and just missed in front of the net. Chance for a shot on from a redirection. Benji looks to clear it. Misses it. And that's the end of the second period. 5-0 to the Cox. I'm just going to quickly run and see if I can get to the bar in 59 seconds. Here we go. And I'm back before the drop of the puck in the third period. Whew. That's professional. That's professional commentating right there. Running across, getting a beer in that 60 seconds. <coughs> they just don't teach that kind of stuff. The quote from the guy behind the bar was, when I asked him if that was a broken ankle, he said, yes, very floppy, which is not what you want to hear. Just slightly out of breath, haven't played hockey in a couple of weeks, so very unfit. That uh, sprint across the bar really took it out of me. I think a ice cold beer won't fix. Huge third period needed here for the Cox if they want to come back into this first game. Down five goals. Here they come in. Good attack there, but just as has been the story of the night for the Cox, they just get as they get close to the net. There's a good stick or a good defensive play by the Swamp Donkeys just to knock the puck away. The shots relatively even, 13-16. but not on the scoreboard. Shot from the net, tipped by number 20 in front of the net. Donkeys look to chip it out, and don't, but do get it out. Eventually Goulet with a good stick. Clearance knocked down. Donkeys are now on the tack. Good pass in front. Oh, and a shot by Goulet. Good shot block there in front of the... Cox net. Mm. 
And again, the cocks are in. Oh, sorry, the donkeys are in. Deep into the cocks end. Lewowski with the puck behind his net. Good breakout. It's been the difference in the two teams, I think. The breakout from the Donkeys has been far superior. Oh, a good stick good slash there. Number nine in the Cox. Turnover, though, in neutral zone. In come the Cox. Three on two. Shot saved by Ethan. Good save and a good juicy rebound, but chipped over the net. Back come the Donkeys. Good back check, turn the puck over. And the Cox he shot it right up his own player's butt there. I would not call that a good breakout. Turnover. Lovely bit of uh, stick handling there by Iodine. As he came in. A weak little shot in though on Curtis who made the save. As time ticks away in the third period. So there's 16 minutes to go. Here come the Cox, two on one. Shot blocked into the corner. Good stick check to turn the puck over. Although he just gives it away again. And puck squeezes it on net where Ethan makes a save. Time just ticking away. on the Cox. Turnover. Jason, great, nice little play in front of the net. No one there though. Puck's chipped out by the Cox again. Down to Ashley Richmond. Oh, it's hit from behind and that'll be a penalty. Just didn't really take a good line there. And you can't do that. Off to the box of shame. There's some kind of pop punk version of radioactive, I imagine, dragons blast out. It's one thing I've always said any song always sounds better in pop punk. It can be the shittest song ever. Chuck a, power, a few power chords and pick slides and a bit of palm mutant. And it is a way better version. Puck chipped out into the donkey's end. Good chase for it there. But a great clearing play by Maidman. And turns it over. Shot wide. High and wide. Anthony Bruford regathers it. Puts it up to the point to Richmond who chips it back down. Max steals it and sends it the length of the ice as they are killing a penalty. 1.18 to go in the power play for the Donkeys. As they come in again, chips back sh to Goulet. Shot blocked. Turned over. Nice es little escape there from the pressure. And have a skate. Here we go. The ice opens up for number nine, and great stick check. Oh, and it turned over just right in the wheelhouse and in front again. And to take their chances, they have been few and far between the chances for the Cox. Prime opportunity there, just couldn't capitalize on it. And here come the Donkeys again. Benji winds up, shot wide. As I look at Ty and Ty just laughs. We could have told you what he was going to do before he even got the puck. Ty 
Donkey's now on attack. Back to Benji. Looks to chip it back down deep. Turns it over. And here come the Cox who just clear it out as they kill this penalty down to the line. Final three seconds. Two, one. Good kill. Much needed if they're going to come back in this game. Still 13 minutes to go. A lot of time. Well, Curtis doesn't really know that one is, where that one is, but finds it eventually as the Cox chip it out. And then a length ice-wide pass there just floats it. Fails to connect. Benji looking for the stretch pass over to Kyle there, but it doesn't get through. We can see Aaron Somerville walk, walking in. Great to see a man who's come back from a back injury the last couple of years. Good to see him back in the finals. And that is icing for the first time this evening. Face off deep in the donkey zone. Back to the point, looking for a one-timer. Just rolled off the heel of the stick. Great breakout again by Ashley Richmond. And to Jason Duff, who's sticking on his across the blue line, looking for a shot, blocked into the corner. Bruford clicks it, dumps it down deep to Kyle. Kyle looking in front. Probably could have taken one or two more strides with it. Turnover, out come the Cox. Jared Parker with a shot, rebound, gets his own rebound. Another good save by Ethan. Sorry about that. Uh, Matt Kennedy just came up and offered me some kind of sexual favour, which I had to turn him down. Fortunately, I can't do that. I'm working right now. So, another time, Matt. You've got a game to focus on anyway. I don't think you should be extending, extending yourself too vigorously before you go on the ice and play golf for the Toe Dragons. I'll take a rain check on that. Puck's dumped in now to the Cox zone. And once again, the breakout for the Donkeys is just very, very controlled and easy. D to D, one pass up and out. Bit of a turnover in the neutral zone though, and we've got a penalty coming up. Number 20 for the Donkeys. Iodine is going for a hook. No, it's... At number 30, Goulet. A bit confused about what the referee was signaling there. I thought he was calling off one of the Cox players, but it was definitely a, a donkey's penalty. Benji's niece is very much like Benji as she goes to the penalty box, furious. Can't believe the call was made against her. Effin and a Jeffin in French as she tries to close the door to the penalty box, struggles, but uh, eventually does.
Good clear by the Donkeys as they shoot it down the ice. And then come the Cox. Dumping it in. Potvin gets to it behind the net, tr clears it, but it bounces off a skate of the half board into the front of the net, into the slot, but the Cox can't capitalise on it. Benji Potvin clears the net, and classic Potvin style then shoots the puck off the referee. <laughs> and it's almost an amazing pass to Jason on the breakaway. That was classic Benji Potvin, just a two-handed cross-check to someone in front of the net, gets the puck, shoots it off the referee, who was fearing for his life, ricochets down for a breakaway pass. That's what you call trapper style. It's a broken stick. That's why he's discarded it there. There goes 250 bucks. Lazowski. Shot gets deflected in front of the net. And now it's Max all the way in. Kyle with a good turnover and he chips it up to Goulet who comes out of the penalty box line. Goulet in. Nice pass in front of Bruford. Shot off the post. Beautiful pass from Goulet there to Bruford in front of the net, who just chips it off the post. And then uh, Kyle, uh, Curtis, sorry, covers up the rebound. Much stronger period here from the Cox, but still five goals down. As that first three and a half minutes of the first period really is... Um, been their Achilles heel in this game. Other than that, it's been a pretty solid game for them. Turnover, trying to clear the puck. Oh, beautiful outlet pass up to Goulet. Nice little bit of stick handling, lays it off to Kyle. Kyle shoots well wider than it. More of a dump in there from Kyle. Shot from the point is blocked out to blue line where it is held momentarily. No, it's out. Chip back down to the donkey's blue line to close in on five minutes to go on this third period of the game one of the FHL finals. Puck chipped in deep to the donkey's zone. Back to collect it. He's number 47 who chips it up the boards and the donkeys are out again. The break out. Here comes Jason Duff. Walks in. Shot. Good save by Curtis. There. Another nice play in front. Maidman just can't tip it on net. Benji picks it up in the corner, lays it out in front, where it is intercepted by the Cox players who chip it out. Beautiful pass in front. Shot. Save. What a save by Ethan there as he holds on to something that I won't mention. Or superstitious people will get angry. So if you just joined us late, a four goal, three and a half minute burst in the first period from the Donkeys has put them in control of the game not helped by a fairly horrific injury to one of the Cox players with a broken ankle as he careened into the inboards. Probably could have been a trip there, but it's Dirty Dave there on the whistle who pretends he didn't see anything. Yeah, broken ankle, not good. Had to be helped off the ice and no doubt helped out of the skate, which is a horrific thing. Play court for offside there. Under four minutes to go here in the th third period. Stay tuned. Immediately following this, 
FHL game one is game one of the BHL finals. I'll hopefully be joined by someone in the commentary box so I'm not just talking to myself like an insane person. I think uh, goal scorer for the Moose, us uh, for the Donkeys. And there's a break in here for Aideen and scores! <laughs> nice little pass from Goulet there to send him away. And he goes five hole on Curtis for the sixth goal for the Swamp Donkeys for tonight. Just to really tap off, uh, cap off a dominating performance in game one. And in again, Goulet. Good bit of D there, though, to knock the puck away. And again, Aiden. Goulet tries to hold the line, but just can't. Stretch that leg out enough. And it is offside with two minutes and 15 seconds left in the third period. Bit of a uh, strange situation in the corner there. I'm not too sure what was actually going on. It was like too slow motion. Oh, shot just squeaks through Ethan into the corner. Recovered by Ashley Richmond and then Lazowski is on the breakout looking to go rinks wide to Kyle who is offside as he's trying to break in. And he'll be unhappy about that. One minute to go as we enter the final minute of the opening game of the FHL Finals here for 2024. Strong performance by the Donkeys. As I must say, full disclosure, the uh, FHL team of my franchise, the Mooseheads, uh, I'll take great pride in this opening victory. I feel like I had a huge part to play in this building of this franchise by doing absolutely nothing. But I'll claim it. I'll claim it was uh, the beers that I bought for one week. Probably in... About the sixth round of the season where Kyle bullied me into bringing them and I bought them. But I feel like this has helped them get along. And shot on and great save by Ethan. There as he's looking to really hold on to that one thing. Out of the corner. Shot. Save. You want to clear the puck here. And there he is. Game one. Game one goes to the Donkeys. Dominating six. Zero victory, a shutout, a shutout for Ethan Holland. And the Cox actually outshot the Swamp Donkeys in the end, 23-22. But that strong opening three and a half minutes in the first period where they put up four goals really was the, uh, the story of the game. So game two will be Thursday night. And that's one win down for the Donkeys. Great crowd in tonight as well. You might be able to hear that on the audio. But they'll be happy with that. So we're just going to take a short break for the uh, BHL final game one so hold tight and we'll be back very soon with the opening game of the BHL finals between the 
Le Pylons and the Toe Dragons.
Welcome back to the BHL Hockey House stream. Game one of the BHL finals now between the Le Palons and the Toe Dragons. Two of the better teams during the regular season of the BHL. So fitting that they will face off in the finals tonight. Two strong teams filled with Ice Blacks and NZHL players and BHL veterans everywhere. I predict, I would say it would be high scoring with the, uh, the on offensive weapons in both teams, but two very, very strong goalies as well. With, uh, with Chuba playing for the Palons, and then Canada in net for the Dragons. So if you have an opportunity to score, you must take it in this game, I'd say. I don't think we're going to have a four-goal first four minutes of the opening period like we did in the FHL final. But who knows, this is 9 27 on a Tuesday night in Auckland, New Zealand. So who knows? If you're back in the stream watching, can you just give us a, uh, a thumbs up or a, uh, a thanks, mate, even? If you can hear everything all good. We're ticking along fine. As uh, Jason Duff just walks in front of us after a Strong performance in game one of the FHL finals. Now I have heard that Benji Potvin, goal scorer in game one, uh, will be joining us for this call. When I went to try and get him before, he was nude in the changing room. I told him, you're commentating. He said, do you want me to come out now? And I said, perhaps put some pants on before you do come out. Whether or not he uh, heeded that advice, I'm not too sure. So we may or may not see a nude Frenchman come out to co-commentate this opening game of BHL. The BHL finals. Bit of a tougher journey to the finals for the Pylons. With a opening, seri opening series against... Uh, the Rays, I believe. Or the Fox, I can't, I can't remember. They're on the other side of the draw, so I don't really know. Uh, both series going 3-2. And then in the, uh, on the other side, the Dragons, well, a bit easier, they just lost one game on the way. That was to the Mooseheads in round two. As, I, as Benji joins me in the commentary box. Woo! Chuck that headset on. Yeah, buddy. Benji, game one. Game one, buddy. Pretty happy with that? Good result. Good result. Yeah. We got Let's good sound? We got yeah, good yeah, sound. we're good. We're good. All right, buddy. Get that mic in front of you there. Yeah, no, very, uh, very happy with the result tonight. Uh, it was a game of three, three periods. Well, it looked like it was a game of uh, the first four minutes. Well, the four, first four minutes were determining the outcome of the other three. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, dominating start. Well, it's all about coming off the block, off the back fence, nice and tight, you know. Good snipe by you as well. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I was in the slot and uh, got a nice little, little pass on an empty netter, just about. The goalie was the other way looking. That's something else, I think. Well, we were we were saying up here that um, you may have surprised him a little bit by just with a quick little snapshot there. Normally you'd wind up tickling the uh, roof. Yeah, that's and true. And blast it, that, that, but you that, just you that, snapped it on quickly one time. Well, it was the quick release, the old yeah. Wesley Snipe special, you know. We all know about Wesley. He's a hell of an actor. He is a hell of an actor. I'm glad he hasn't got embroiled in any kind of um, P. Diddy trouble, which is good to know. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. I was worried about him. But anyways, uh, back to hockey. Uh, great game. 
Yeah, good game. Good opening game. game. The goalie. Uh, Shout out for your goalie. Yeah, yeah. Were I you? said to goalie, I said, hey, bud, good stuff in the puck tonight, you know. And he was pretty happy with that because I told him he was a sieve during the game. Well, before the game started, actually. Well, that's just good. That's just good coaching. Well, it's all part of the destroying the self-esteem and then rebuilding it just before the game, you know. Thank oh. you for this beer. I've, cheers. Cheers, buddy. Game one done. Game one under the belt. I had to make a quick break to the uh, the bar in between the periods. Did you? Yeah, I made it over and got a got a, a beer. Ass in I, sixty seconds. I thought that was good timing. Oh, just like the movie. Go, yeah, beer gone, in sixty gone seconds. Gone in sixty seconds. Yeah, great yeah. movie. Uh, now I don't know if you you heard, but there was a um, the injury in your game. Yeah, I saw. I picked Bro- him up. Broken ankle. I told him, I think you broke your ankle. Yeah. And he said to me, How do you know? I said, Well. I'm not a doctor, but I'm looking at your leg. I just play one on TV. I'm looking at your leg, and I'm looking at your foot. It's not lining up. Yeah. I think it's broken. Yeah. And he admitted afterwards. Yeah, the barman said it was floppy, which is never Ooh, a good thing in either ways. That's never healthy. Right, here, here we, we go. go. The game started. Game one. Game one between. Le Pylons and Toe Dragons. I wish I had my glasses so I could, could see what's going I'll on. Do, I'll do the play-by-play. You just give us the color. Thank you, buddy. The red's got the ball. Oh, no, it's not a ball. It's a puck. <laughs> Come on now. And here come the Dragons with a breakout. McDonald, bit of a toe pick as he got across the blue line. you got to watch out for those blue lines. I think I think he's wearing uh, figure skaters. Skates. Ah, he's got the big toe pick. That's it, buddy. That's a that's a no-no in this game. Polozov with a shot from the he's half a, board. He's a handy player. He's not bad. He's very handy. He's not bad. His, his um, stick is like a piece of rebar. Correct. It's about uh, 170 stiffness. Not only that, he's got Velcro on it. Oh, he's got Velcro on it. Yeah. That's why the puck sticks to it all the time. I've seen him. There's a breakout. Atwell cuts through the middle. Oh, shot on. Nice. Chubba with a good save. Sorry, buddy. I'm cutting you up here. I'm not used to coming to any and chirping <laughs> at the same time. You just chirp. You just chirp, and I'll, I'll try and and the, and, the talk. And, and the play stops. Yeah, so this is your chirp time. Yeah, this is it. Right, I got it. So, uh, any, I think... Any, I think any tales you can tell us? There's a lot of players that you've probably played with before oh, out on the ice and well toured been, with and gone, gone on multiple hockey trips with. It's been 24 years in New Zealand. So a uh, few tours, a few wins, a few Ws, you know, over the years. Uh, who's been the most disgraceful on tour? The most disgraceful? I'd like to say it's Rob Moon. You know. Where was he tonight? Uh, missing in action. I think he was sitting on the couch somewhere. He was actually tuned into the live stream. He um, he commented, "Go donkeys!" Yeah, what what a, what, a, what a team player, right? Okay, <laughs> now are you allowed to swear? Just checking. Uh, we're past eight thirty. Yes, I think you're okay. Good. good. Yeah. So parental guidance over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank no, you. it's um, adults only uh, listening now, and viewing. Well, the play has stopped, and the play will restart in the uh, in the in, what's the name of that team? The pylons, pylons. Uh, side there and the toeies are a bit toeies aren't they the toe dragons oh some fancy dangles there oh a bit of a little nice little escape there from um, Kyle Marsh I've played many games with him I thought him already knows I remember when he was a young rookie he barely had hairs on his nuts did you teach him how to grow hair on his nuts no I just saw it grow over the years in the shower, you know, when yeah, we go yeah. after the game. That's what happens. Toe Dragons break out. Thomas Tappen. Clean pass. Nice clean pass to one of the McDonald's. I can't remember if it's either Kyle or... Or Lanny. Is it Lanny McDonald's? Doesn't really have the mo, the no, mustache like Lanny. Not quite Ginger, is he? Yeah. Oh. Tell you what, it's good to see uh, Benji is um, Somerville out there. Summertime. Yeah. Scanning had a horrific back injury he had. a couple of years ago, and he's, yeah. he's back, so it's good to see him. I played with him, actually, last week, as a matter of fact, and uh, I was quite happy to see him play uh, and proud of him. Any pizzas? <laughs> oh, absolutely. He uh, is one of the crafters of the pizzas, you know. <laughs> I think he's part Italian, that's why. Right. But Somerville, it's almost French, you know. Somerville. 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 Et voilà. It's a summertime... Um, En français. En français. C'est ça. Uh, we'll stop play. Stop Pun- play. Punchy was saying that um, that's your niece out yes, there. Yes, yes. Ariane Goulet. 
What a, what a uh, hockey name that is, Goulet. That is that an amazing name. Her, uh, as a matter of fact, her father is uh, one of the nine brothers that Michel Goulet had. Yep. So Michel is obviously her uncle. Michel and Goulet is her uncle. Yes, sir. Number 16 for the Colorado mm. Avalanche and... Los Angeles Kings? No, no. He played for the Nordiques. Oh, right. El Capitan for the Nordiques for many years. Uh, Marcel Dion was... That's right. The Kings, That's right. right. That's right. 16 for the Kings. So, yeah, no. Uh, Michel played a tremendous uh, hockey in the NHL. He was one hell of a player, to be honest. So how did she end up out here? Well, she's related to me. Uh, <laughs> can you believe that? And she called me up one time in August last year, and she said, hey, I'd like to come out and uh, visit New Zealand en français, you know, and to learn English and to uh, assimilate. And I said, hey, if you're going to come out of here and be a goulet, you better bring your skates. And she said, for sure. And she brought them, and uh, she's teaching a few of the boys a few tricks. She's pretty handy. Yeah, good, um, good hands. Good hands, yeah. Nice, nice backhand pass. Absolutely, buddy. She fed me a couple of good ones. Here come the Toe Dragons. Chubba sticks it away into the corner easily. Back to the point. Simon with a shot. Tip at well. Regathers the rebound. Gets the puck back again, but cleared out by Kieran O'Sullivan. And we have got a penalty. Oh, someone's been uh, disrespectful of the game. This is going to be a I bit of shame, is it? I believe that is... Um, Luke Simon, I think. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there he is. I don't, know, I don't know what the call was. I think it may have been hooking or slashing. or was... may have been a... Bit of a rough call. It is what would you prefer? Just let the boys play. Well, you know, boys and girls. Sorry. In this particular, put, uh, put the stick, put the whistle away. That's right. Put it in the pocket and uh, just just play the game. Just let it roll. Unless it's you know dangerous and you know ankle breaking sort of thing. Don't want any of that, I suppose. But well, that ankle breaking wasn't even a. It was a self-induced. Yeah, one. he just he yeah. was. I think he didn't go to learn to skate on Sunday and so he missed his session. And uh, he should have had it, you know, kind of thing. Power play getting set up here, chipped in front. I mean, Held on to it by Kennedy. That's right. Kennedy's one hell of a goalie, isn't he? He is a very good goalie. I play many many games with him. and uh, Actually, as a matter of fact, I, uh, I had a few drinks with him uh, about two years ago on the 1st of July. And I don't know if you know, but that's Kennedy. Canada Day. Canada Day, yep. And so I kept asking all day what his name was. He said Canada Day. And and I was like, did you say, no, no, I know what day it is. I know what day it is. That's exactly what I said, all day. And then it took until about 4.30. And we started about midday. As yeah. you can imagine, by 4.30, one's pretty blinded by a few beers. And, uh, yeah, I, he showed me his license, and he was Canada Day. I was like, wow, that's a cool name, bud. I mean, if you're going to be Canadian... And your name's Canada Day. Hey, you know, you better be a good goalie. And that he is. He is a very good goalie. Yeah. Good story. Here we go. Punchy. Shot oh. wide. That was a nice big. That's a good breakout pass by Punchy there. Oh, jeez. That's going to be. Is a young fella. Oh, he forgot the Ivan, puck. Ivan D. Ivan D forgot the puck. Oh, oh plays it off the net. Nice. Bit of Gritsky. Bit of, bit of backroom play there. In the office. Pylon set it up behind the net as the penalty comes to an end. And the shame Heads is up. over. Ooh. Oh, he almost got out of the box with the puck in his hands. Oh. That's a junior play right there, eh? Just giving the puck to someone who's almost blown a wheel. <laughs> in come the Toe Dragons now, dishes oh. it off. Yeah. Yeah, those back pass don't always come off. No, you always, sometimes you want to be going forward with the puck. Yeah, that's true, but uh, I must admit tonight I had a good one, just quietly. Oh, it was a, yeah, it was a drop pass to... Um, Bruford. Bruford, who rung it off the post. He, do, he rang the doorbell and, yeah. uh, on both sides and got the pizza delivered in. <laughs> in comes McDonald, shot blocked by Andy Hay, which is what Andy Hay does, is block shots. 
All day. Oh, here we go. All day, all hay. Here comes the big 175 piece of rebarb. <laughs> He's relentless for a Russian. It's amazing like he, he just doesn't seem to get tired. He just sits on a toilet, buddy. He's, he does it at home just for training. With that low squat. Yeah, buddy. He uses it to push himself. You know, so he's pushing himself off the toilet all the time. It's a great trick. What's your... Um, oh, here we go. Oh, turnover. Good step up there to take the loose part. What's your um, thoughts on bidets? Sorry, what? Bidets. Bidets. The, bidets, the Japanese toilet. Oh, the toilet. bidets, yeah, the bidets. That's French, actually. <coughs> bidet. Is it French? It's bidet. Yeah, that's oh, bidet. That's right. How did the Japanese come so... Well, no, the Japanese, they've gone a step further. They electrified the whole thing. Yeah, it's basically a computer. It speaks to on you. On the toilet, yeah. Mm. Very handy to clean everything, you know? It just, um, it makes everything so easy. It's actually brilliant. I mean, you got music, you got a nice smell. Some nice hot, warm water. Yeah. Front and back. In the proper position, if mm. you're a male or female, depending on, on the what button you press, press you know? Here we go. Nice save, Canada Day. Good again. save, Canada Day. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but I'm calling it for you. You got to say the uh, the pylons have had the better pressure, better, better chances. More oh, here we go, punchy in. in. More, more consistent, yeah. yeah. I like the uh, the one sock. Oh, one, you like that? Know? Yeah, that's that's interesting combination. Kind of works when both teams are like this. Yeah. With opposing colours, but if you have teams that have got similar colours, it can get very, very confusing with the two sock system. See, we play with colourblind players on my team, I'm sure of it, because they keep passing the puck to the opposition. I keep telling them, I say, well, are you blind or colourblind? Yeah, right. Shot, chance. Good save by Chuba. High stick, and that'll be play on. Play it's punchy on. wheels with it in the corner. Looking like Joe Thornton with that. No visor pass in front by Atwell. Good save and defensive play. And there he is. Polozov on the way out. Oh, he's so selfless, isn't he? He gave it to the opposition there just because there was nobody else to give it to. Well, hockey's for everyone. It is. And he wanted to make sure that the other team had a chance to play with the puck. Otherwise, it's pretty boring yeah. just to watch him play. I mean, not to say that he's boring, but he's so talented then, you know. He needs to bring his team with him. That's what he needs to do. He's trying to build up their confidence, I suppose. And the opposition as well, just to give yeah, them yeah. a... Yeah, yeah. Even there, a clean face-off win, but it was so good that it was a breakout for the, the Toe Dragons. Shaw! Oh, that was a nice feed. Good feed by Andy Petty, brother of Alan Petty. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's Andy. I've played with his brother, Alan. Alan is a... Um, he's a very handy Petty. Even still now, he's just... He prefers to... Uh, Spinorama every time. Well, let me tell you a story about Alan Petty, who is a very petty uh, player. He, um, one time in, in Dunedin, he was so, uh, he was into Justin Timberlake's, I don't know if you recall, Bring bring 60 Back. Oh, yeah. It was a great song. Yep. So he goes to one of the bars there, and we're wearing our outfits. There Where, whereabouts was this? In Dunedin. Dunedin, yep. Yeah. And we're out there at a, at a nightclub, and, and we're wearing Oakland colors, you know, blue and stuff. And because of that... So this was on like an uh, Auckland on, ice on hockey a, trip. Yeah, on the Sanctioned by the... By the association. Yep. And this is 2004, a couple of years ago. And um, and Alan Pitty was a young man at that point. He was unmarried and quite uncivilized, really. Yep. So I was a, so a bit of a mentor to him, you know, because I've always been a little bit older than the boys, you know. Anyways, and uh, there's young Alan decided that Shot. he was going to be... Well, sorry, oh. buddy. You no, sorry, no, no, it was just there was a good chance in there. There sure was. And anyway, so so young Alan's in the middle of the dance floor and he decides to be the uh, center of attention. So he puts his hand up like this in the air and, and then he lets the girls dance around him. And I said, what, what are you doing, Alan? He goes, well, I can't dance with them all, so I let them dance with me. That is a hell of a line. I know. Married now, I believe. Oh, absolutely, with kids and but all. But that would that would be definitely before that. Oh yeah, before. Before, before that, before, of before course. That, before that, that, that end. The good young man. So, did you teach him that line? Was that was that out of the the Benji uh, Potvin playbook? It was more a Justin Timberlake thing. Bring sixty back. That's right. what he was trying to do. You see. 
And here we are. Coming out of the zone and the uh, Toe Dragon. Toe Dragon's going back behind the net and passing it out. Again, the, the forecheck from Polozov just... Is just tremendous and relentless. Oh, and he shot. doesn't let go. He just no. doesn't let go. I told you he's got Velcro on his stick. He's got a, he's got a big dome, though. Jeez, he's a big head. It sure does. I've, I've seen it without the helmet. Big brain, though. Big hockey brain. Oh, absolutely. Well, here comes Somerville. And he's never tired. Unlike Somerville, who sometimes gets tired if he hasn't done his warm-ups. Yeah, very particular warm-ups that Somerville has. Yep. Lung sure warm-ups. Yes, that's correct. He does the uh, lap around the, uh, the ice rink. Breathing. Yep. Here comes that well on a two-on-one shot. Oh, save. That was nice. By Chubba. Squeeze the elbow on it. Is it Chubba with some new gear? Chubba with some blue pads, which is a bit confusing. It looks like a Ron doll of old, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, for the Nordics. Yeah, buddy. Shot. Oh, oh good Wesley save. Wesley Snipe right there. Good save by Polosov. Polosov, uh, by Canada on Polosov. That's right. Oh, smart, smart goalie. Yep, just freeze it with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, um, def definitely a different period than your first period where you were leading four, well, the, these guys four nil after three and a half minutes. Yeah, they're not as decisive as we were. I mean, we came out straight out of the back fence, and. Uh, and we, did, we decided that in the bench. I mean, sorry, in the dressing room and say, hey, guys, we need to get off the back fence and come out swinging. Yeah. Makes sense. It's the best way just to take it to the opposition is just to not let them breathe as you come flying out. It's well, that's right. You want to choke them. Yeah. Take the oxygen away. Stomp on the head. Yeah. Just like a fire. Extinguish it. Yeah. Kill the flame. It's the end of the first period, 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> so this is a not only just a hockey commentary, it's also a fire safety Yes, that's right. We're sponsored, by, yeah, yeah. We're sponsored by a fire company. New Zealand Fire Service has um, got us to talk about the uh, extinguishing house fires. Well, the dangers of fires and the importance of alarming your house. You've got to have smoke alarms everywhere. Smoke how alarms, many, how many smoke alarms do you have in your house? I think i got four. Oh, yep. i got a big house. In the main, what what area is your kitchen? No, no, near the bedrooms. That's the important part because you want to know that the smoke's coming towards oh, you. Oh, is, is with you? Because yes. if you've got smoke in the kitchen, then, I mean, that could be from your uh, cooking. Cooking bacon. Yeah. Yeah. So near the bedroom's always good. Sleeping because, areas. Well, yeah. Because then also, also the bedroom in my house are on the second floor. So smoke rises, right? Humble, humble brag there. That's it's a two-story house. Well, you know, it's one of those things, <laughs> one of those facts, you know. But, but the fire department, great job those boys do. I saw oh. them. T I saw them on Sun. Uh, sorry, on Monday, whilst I was taking my boat fishing, and they were all there having coffees and looking at all the boats uh, <laughs> at the Tecumseh uh, boat ramp. I felt sorry for them because they were on duty. Yeah, yeah. But but lucky for them, they were chatting the girls that are the ambulance girls. So that was nice. On a sure, sunny day. On sure, a sunny there'd day be a, on the a fair bit of. Um Cross play between. I'd like to think so. I mean, the girls that are ambos in the ambos are smart girls, mm. and uh, the firemen, well, they're just pretty boys, aren't they? So the good mix. Good know? units. Yeah, good mix. Here we go. Second, second period. period. Here we go with uh, zero zero dragons on attack shot, and once again Chuba just swallows it up. Must be so nice having a goalie like that just back there. Just you know, all you have to do is just. He's playing the third D, isn't he? Yeah, push the play out to the wing, and he'll have everything covered. I just had a thought before, you know, when I saw that, that shot being saved. I think this is a game of goalies. And I was saying that in the pregame. There you go. There's a lot of uh, offensive talent on show, but... But no fire. But the key is the goalies. Yeah. Shot again, Chubba just... There's no fire. The oxygen is not there. No, no. As again, we've said that the uh, this, this game is actually brought to you by the New Zealand Fire Service. Uh, sponsoring this game, which is lovely of them, and we just have to just remind the audience that remind that's what's you going of, on. Yep, yeah, how to extinguish fires in your home, particularly grease fires. You don't want to be chucking water on a grease fire. No, you don't. You, you want put to be a using a, a rated extinguisher, extinguisher, or even baking soda, or the old fashioned wet towel. Wet towel, just chuck a tea towel on there. That's right, buddy. No, chucking water on a grease fire is a 
disaster waiting to happen. It's a big no-no. It just spreads it. Also, New Zealand's got a big problem with um, gas heaters. They do. Leaving clothes too close to a gas heater. Uh, there you go, mate. That's a guaranteed ignition right there. Especially but those those clothes that just made of 90% nylon. Just well, imagine the hockey gear, like the jerseys and just straight up. Yeah, buddy. Just fires up right there. These BHL jerseys, they'll be up in less than a second. Absolutely fire hazard there. That's why some of those guys are so hot on the ice, right? Well, that's why it's played on ice, because it is so hot that it naturally cools down the um, internal temperature of, of the, of the if burning this were, fire. If this yeah. was outside, these people, would, these players would actually be on fire. They would be, especially some of the big guys where there's so much uh, pressure applied to the skates. Yeah. You know, and you see it. You see the flames. Yeah, the, kin the, the kinetic energy that's created oh, yeah, is buddy. just shot by Atwell. Gets his own rebound and fires a shot into a shin pad of Dwayne Mackey. Great to see Dwayne Mackey out there. He's a legend of the game. I think he's a two-time, almost three-time BHL Is he? Cup winner, yeah. Has he got his name on the cup? I won I won a cup with him. With the Castors, Castors, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Early before they started letting good players into the competition. <laughs> won't, we won't blame the coach for that, or yeah. the general manager, or whatever. No, I that think was. you were the you were the general manager of the Castors yeah, at the sure time. Yeah, sure was for quite some time. Yeah. So you built a uh, an empire, a franchise, dominating franchise, which is still dominating now. I think they won they won last year. Right. There's a couple and of banners here I can see. Yeah. Been to the finals a couple of years as well. That's right. And then he won with the cheese, I think, a couple of years ago. All oh, right, he's a uh, multi-club sort of champion. He's just a good guy in the room. Yeah, he is. Eh? He's so loud, isn't he? <laughs> hey, you can never <laughs> shut him up. No, I know. He's one of those guys. Just like, shut up, Mackie. It's just sometimes you got to say, Mackie, shut up. Yeah, that's right. There's Blake Jackson leading the rush as a D-man. Nice pass, shot. From a bad angle. Now, for the audience out there, Mackie is one of the quietest men I've ever met. He's a man of few words, to be fair. From Saskatchewan, all the way. From Saskatoon. Loves his, uh, what are they called? The Saskatoon. Blades? CFL team. Uh, there's like two teams that in the CFL that have the same the, name. The, oh, the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders, yeah. And then there's the right, the other Rough Riders. Uh, that's right, from Ottawa. From Ottawa, yeah. That's right. That's the most Canadian football thing ever. Just have two team, two teams named the same yeah, thing in the same competition. It's brilliant. The Rough Riders are playing the Rough Riders tonight. I mean, seriously. It saves on um, commentators if they were charging per word. That's true. That's true. I don't know that they did that. Did they do that? They do, radio? yeah. They, oh, that's what I'm invoicing Punchy for. Oh, true. Yeah. Shit. So I, I'd so say you should do the same. I feel like I'm going to get quite a lot because I talk <laughs> quite a lot. You know? And speaking of Punchy, here he is with a is. nice oh, breakout nice pass feet, to nice Summer. Nice feet to Summertime. Gets the rebound and Punchy is going to try no, and get a backhand no. shot on. It's, it's yeah. messy. It's ugly. Oh, there's a shot. Yes. Save by Canada Day. Not Canada Day. It's no, Canada not, Day. not July 1st. Not July 1st, no. We could nick him, nickname his, you know, him. You could call way. him July 1st. We could, mm. just for simplicity. Mm. But I don't think the audience would appreciate it. So, because July 1st used to always be the um, free agency day, didn't it? Sure, did. sure was, yeah, that's right. That's is a it, good is, fact. Is it still that? Or correct, is it, that is correct. Now that the league is so confused with oh, that's starting tough. late and everything. That's that's tough. Another stop play. Nice save by Canada once more. And face off. Deep in the Tro Dragon zone. In the in the dragons. In the den. So when's game two? Thursday? Game two is Thursday. Uh, I had a special special challenge for me um, to be here on Thursday, but I, I worked it out. Got to go up north and oh, come back. Here we go. We're off. Pulls off into the zone, shot. Jesus, I feel Hook. sorry for that goalie. That, I don't know if that has stick, but that went very Weird. high. So he had the wrong club, I think. Yeah, you might have. Just the weight on the stick that he puts on. I think. And then again, just. He's so painful. <laughs> for, 
It's one of those situations where it's like an, it's a non-check league, but you can kind of... Oh, oh, he is calling a pen. Yeah. Oh, I mean... Oh, no. No. That no. was just a good, clean... That was so clean. That's, that's uncalled for, but he called it. But it wasn't really a body check. It was just a kind of elimination off it, the puck. It just helped him in the boards. I mean, seriously, he took the, board, the puck away from him. Yeah. And the other guy happened to be there to absorb his speed because he's so fast. Mm. Well, the player was making the same play. He was stopping up, and he just continued into him, took the puck away. That's actually disparaging what's going on in this league sometimes. The referees, the zebras, too much whistle. Needs to be an investigation. I think we're going to have to review the tapes. Well, luckily the stream is on YouTube forever, so they can... People are yelling for the clock to start. Yes, they are. And, and it finally has, started. but all yes. that means is just more hockey for us. Well, that's right, and more chirps. Oh! Shot just over the net by Ivan Damatal. That's a nice name, Damatal. Damatal? I believe from? that's a pronunciation. Where is he from? Can't say a played with him. I know, he's, a young, he's a young kid, yeah. yeah. He's, he was um, just in the swarm this year as well. Is he? One of those killer bees. No. Are you a, uh, a swarm man or an animals man? Oh. I, I you played most of your hockey out west. So yeah. And you're, you're from up north. Yes, that's north correct. North Shore. Yeah, I, I could, I'd say the west side is, is pretty cool, you know. Great crowd. Great, massive crowd. There was uh, a lot of tremendous noise in our game. Well, there's a yeah, bigger crowd for your game than there, what is, oh, yes. what there is here. I did ask Tim who uh, those people came for as to how much, he paid, how much he paid them. And uh, he said it was 500 bucks. Per person or uh, for the group? total? Yeah, rent a crowd. That's not bad. Not bad. It was good that they were all wearing the same fluoro high-vis as well, so you well, knew where they were. Well, not only that, I asked them, I said, are they dangerous? Is that why they're wearing high-vis? So we know who they are as dangerous people. He said, no, he said, they're just loud. Right. Of which oh. they were. Oh, big Ag save. Again, Chubba just swallows up that. Just I mean, it was a, how, did, how did he get in alo alone like that? I think he skated fast. Uh, that, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. No, he uh, he just broke out. You know how it happens. And uh, and Chavo, Chavo had his eyes on him. I'm not sure about Chavo's helmet. The whiteness of it all. He needs some kind of um, design, I think. I think he's asking for a sponsor. For that, is that is that right? Is that possible? Yeah, well, if there's anyone out there, um, apart from the New Zealand Fire Service, that um, would be keen to sponsor Chubba this, through this uh, BHL, uh, not BHL, NZHL season, um, playing for the Admirals. I forgot to mention about the Fire Service. If you need more information mm. on the Fire Service, you need to go online and, and go onto the website to get more details on you know, how to look after your home. Yep, how and, to, and how to you, fire your prep family, your house. And yep. your family, you know fire blankets and the likes, you know, in views of preparations and things like that for, you know, for uh, being, being there and, and looking after your family. Even just get a, um, get a qualified electrician in, just if you're in a bit of an old home, qualified electrician in just to check the wiring in your house. That's right. It's always better than, than just depending on those batteries that keep beeping all the time, you know? Yeah, especially if you're um, a little bit hungover and you've cooked up a bit of bacon, as you said before, and... You're a little bit frustrated about the fire alarm going on, the smoke alarm, so you just you turn it off one day, you forget about it. And that's the lethal. And then your house burns down. That's and right. And then you feel shame. Yeah. Family burns, and I mean, it's not, not, not easy to come back from that. No, it's not. In come the tow dragons. The crowd is uh, leaving. I'm not sure what well, or what you said that now they're all leaving. Well, it is a contest of goaltenders, and, and the crowd is, although enthused by the players, uh, they certainly are um, impressed by the goalies and therefore have given up on the game, I think, 
because because the golden is so solid. Yeah. Do you know what this looks like? This is a is an old school battle between Patrick Waugh and Martin Brodeur. Oh, this is a good analogy. Yeah. I was going to say uh, Eddie the Eagle and yep. Cujo. And Cujo, yep. yeah. Yeah. Canada's you know, got a bit of Cujo to him. He's got. He does. He stands like him, and he's uh, he's solid. And there he goes again. Yeah, real goalie battle. Sure is. Martin Brodeur came out this week and said that um, goalies these days are babied. Wow. They don't play enough games. Oh, that's an interesting Coming one. from a guy that played about 79 games a season. <laughs> so he said, yeah, no, they don't play enough games. It's Out of 80. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the uh, backup for the Devils, you knew you are uh, You're not playing much. No. You're just and taking high-rising shots in practice. And the reason why he wasn't playing that one game is because Ooh. of his birthday. That was a nice smoke show. Yeah, a little bit of a oh. snowing of the goalie there. That's never a good thing. The goal, some goalies take really offense to that. They do. They don't like it. Just get over it. Again, don't be a baby. No. I think that's where you're coming from. Or just don't be a goalie. Well, there's that too. If you don't like it. You're the, you are the weirdest people in the world, goalies. Well, that's an interesting subject. <laughs> well, there's a Have you, I mean, <clears throat> good good friend of yours and mine, Jeremy Allen. Oh, the legend. Would, would you consider him a stable human being? <laughs> well, it depends by stable if you're talking about gravity and whether whether he's top heavy and, and therefore gravity takes over him and he's not stable. No, it's from that perspective. Very low center of gravity. He sure does. No, more mid center of gravity. Mid center, yeah, he's down low. And and also over the, over the years failed to get up and go. You know, mm. like most goalies uh, get tired of it. Oh, we have a penalty. Another penalty. Bit of shame. Oh, book it's, it's uh, Brooke Patron. Yes, the actress. Yep. She is a tremendous actress. Is she? Yes, she is. What, 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 do you have her IMDb up? What has she, she been in? Well, she's trying to get into some westerns and, and the likes. She's got a, got, a, got a sort of a farming background sort of, sort of girl. Um, she's got a nice, um, well, so I've been told anyways. Um, she's, um, yeah, she's looking for some gigs in acting. She's a trained actress. No kidding. Right. Yeah. Like in like properly country know. and western kind of movies sort of thing. You know? Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, and we got we've got a good battle in front. Oh, here we go. Here we go. A bit of uh, argy bargy. Yep. Who's that? Oh, that's uh, Tom. Tom Thomas Joseph and yeah, TJ, otherwise known as TJ and Michael Atwell. Just Michael Atwell's a is that funny little guy? <laughs> his, his old man Chopper, I used to play with. And, right. Uh, and to be honest. His son is uh, not too far off the old block, you know. The, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's what they say, and that is for sure. With a na with a name like Chopper, I can't imagine these. Um he wasn't well liked because of his uh, handiness with a stick, you know. Right. Yeah, very handy. I guess that's where the name Chopper would come from. Absolutely, he uh, broke many ankles. If that makes any sense. Bobby Clark stars. Yeah, buddy, I've seen it. We played rollerblades actually back in the days. I used to be a multi-sport kind of player, I was. Multi-sport athlete? Athlete, that's right, buddy. Still am. You know, albeit that I've uh, overindulged on a couple of beers and over the years I've gained a couple of pounds, but, uh, you know, which have, have, hasn't, you know. Do uh, you know who I saw who's massive? Is an actor, uh, Crow. Oh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, Oh, friend. yeah, no, he's... He's um, one beefy dude. He is not... Um, He's not well. Maximus Aurelius. No. Amidius anymore. No, he no, is. No, um, no. He's not Aurelius. Not, not, he, none of that. He's Maximus, all right, but not in a good way. It's Maximus uh, heavy duty belt. Maximus Fadius. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw him in a. Um, he's 3XL, I think he is. He was in a movie about Road Rage? Yes. Yeah. Oh, was it Road Rage? No. It was, it was the one with the. With the drones and stuff like that, you know, in the army. And uh, right. I saw that recently. Road Rage? I don't think he was in Road Rage. I saw him in a Road Rage run and he was... That's Gelingal. Gelingal, uh, you know, that was in that. 
Road Rage. Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, yeah. No, Road House. Oh, Roadhouse. Yeah, yes. the remake of the... Um, yes, of the classic Patrick yeah. Swayze. Patrick Swayze one where That's he rips right. a man's throat out. That's it. Great movie. Is there... Um, is there breasts in the new one? Well, there were. Actually... Uh, that was the hallmark of the original. There was some good breasts. What was the famous UFC fighter? What's his name? Oh, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor features in that movie. Yeah. And he gets beaten up. Oh, uh, I don't know if we want to spoil... Oh, some, so some people may want to watch. Uh, That's true. That's true. <laughs> there is a game out there. Did you there know? is a, there is a game. And so no no change in the score at the end of the second period. Still zero zero. After two periods of play. Two periods, tight checking. It's a goalie's game. It really is. Well, that was entertaining. I thought this this uh, this match so far in the last two periods. They're still at well in the box. Feeling shame and not even talk to his teammates because of the bad things he's done. No, he's just going to sit here and stew, I think, on this side. Yeah, he's going to be thinking about what he's done wrong. See, what what I think is going to happen here is because it's getting a bit chippier. It's going to be a um, bit more. Uh, there's going to be a bit more of it. A bit more, um, what's it called, fisticuffs. A bit more chip, a bit more stick work. No fisticuffs, though, eh? No fisticuffs, but uh, oh, Adam Hens here. What happens when we get down to the last kind of couple of minutes? If uh, one team starts to blow out the other one, then things things might get a bit silly. Yeah. So if you're listening on the chat, just send through your uh, movie recommendations. I recommend the original Roadhouse. Yes, that's a great movie. I watched the original June the other day. Oh, did you? From 1984. It's wow. That's a classic. Fucking weird. That's a long classic. I mean, yeah. you know. Well, I've, I've seen the new one, and then I wanted to watch the the other new one, but then I thought I'd watch the original, and that is fucking weird. Yeah, that's a different. That's a different show. Yeah, and the new one, it's more kind of artistic. But in the original one, yeah, the way they traveled traveled through space was this kind of big snail thing shot lasers out of its mouth and asshole and that's how they okay so it's it's serious hi, uh, wi-fi or hi-fi or whatever you call yeah it. it was weird it was weird or sci-fi yeah sci-fi that's sci-fi wi-fi yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's right buddy well back then it would have been wi-fi sci-fi you know oh chance throws it in front polozov had to stick up but andy hay came in and took it away from him put it back to the point oh. not a good play here comes ivan d ivan d in deeks Puts it wide. All Swedish, no finish. Ch oh, you got to say that Chubba got across there and just... He's just solid, isn't he? Forced him to make a play that he didn't really... Didn't plan to do. No. It's tough out there. Those poor kids, are, they're giving it all. And the goal is the stone walling them. I think there might be a brick wall in the goals, you know. The puck's just not going in. I was talking to uh, Punchy in the earlier game. I didn't know they sold stone baked pizza here now. Oh, over there, there's a sign for it. Oh, that's nice. New addition to um, Paradise Avenue. To the huge menu that they hold. Well, it's gigantic, isn't it? It's almost like Chef's Table. <laughs> there's oh. a lot. There's a lot going on there. I think now you're stretching. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry for the laughter, uh, audience. But it's pretty funny. Right, face off in the uh, Toy Dragons uh, zone. Who's your uh, Who's your pick to score? Score first, Dragons or Pylons? Well, I think the puck's going to do a lot of work, but um, it's a tough one. I think I'd like to think Polsov might pull something out of his hat, but it feels right now that the uh, that the uh, pylons are playing the f like almost like in a penalty like box in this in this in their zone. Yeah, they're not the killing the penalty, but they're not. They're not coming out of five on five, but they're yeah. not even pursuing the puck really. No, it's, uh, it's strange. Just kind of shooting it up the boards and trying to. Oh, it's loose. Early whistle. Oh, there's a cheeky cheeky puck in the net there. Early whistles, it squeaked loose and. It's never good, is it? That's not going to help the uh, players opinion of the stripes there when the early whistle mm. 
May I steal another beer, Benji? Please. Oh, help thank yourself. you. I mean, I would hate for you to go parched. My throat was drying up a little bit there. I don't want to deprive the viewers and I sense that. audience of. Uh, I sense that with your uh, the tone of your voice of shifting a little bit. It's just. Right here we go. So, uh, Toe Dragons coming out of their zone into the offensive zone. And Good. Big T bone coming Shot through from the point. Stopped. In front, save again by Chubba. He doesn't let rebounds. No. He swallows them up. Very selfish about the puck. Mm. He just wants to hold it. Well, as a goalie, you, you never really get to feel the puck that much, so he's taking every opportunity he can just to hold on to it. What I thought one time at, at one of our goalies, one of the great ones that you named earlier, Jeremy Allen, I, um, I said to him it's one day, I said, listen, mate, if you want the puck, you need to take it home and put it under your pillow. Then you'll be one with the puck. And he did that, and he was uh, a championship winner for many, uh, many oh, a season. Here we go, Kyle Marsh and oh! scores! I think, I think you picked it. You picked the pylons to score first. I didn't expect him. A little bit score. of a broken play at the blue line, chipped through, and Kyle Marsh in backhand, forehand, top he's, shelf. He's a handy player. He I, a, like I said to you earlier today, I played many games with him. I told him everything he knows, and to be honest, He's surpassed me now. Yeah. Do you know what I like? I like a forward wearing six. That's that's pretty out there, eh? Six that's or four as a forward is such a it's a it's out there. It's a boss move. It is a boss move. He's a handy player. He's a nice guy. Yeah, very nice guy. He deserves that goal. I think he's one of Punchy's uh, old mates slash imports from Canada. He certainly is, and to be fair, I've I've shared rooms with him. I've been overseas with him. I play many games with him, and uh, he's such a nice guy about the puck. He's he's selfless out there, you know. Yeah. But once you give it to him, he's got the eagle eye. He does. Better give and go, give it back. That's right, buddy. And and he can put it in the net, you know, if he has to. Oh, we just saw it there. Oh yes, we did. So Toe Dragons now need to push the play here. They can't just sit back. They need to score. There we go. Polosov with a uh, bit of a giveaway puck. at the blue line. Yeah, he sure Here did. comes Ivan Damatal. Ivan the magician. So that toe drag that he did nice there. Nice wide base easy, there. Give improved. it back. Give it back. Oh, he passed it off and was looking to get it back as he went to the net. No one to be seen. Punchy with a bit of weight. Just those boards, boards bent there as he Went into them. Uh, so you're not going to beat you're not going to beat trouble with a shot from the outside of the top of the circle there. No, that's wishful, wishful thinking. Uh, here we go. We have a slash now. <laughs> yeah, it's a penalty. Tripping, tripping penalty. And the ref is hearing it a little bit from the. From the young lad. Who wears the C? I'm not sure about that. It wasn't, sure. I don't know if that was captain material there. No, I think that was more the fact that the shirt is small for the young lad, you know? Right. Yeah. So it fits him better. I mean, 88 is a big number. Lindros, I mean, seriously? Oh, the big A. Oof. What a monster, eh? He was, he was the most hated player in, in Quebec, in the province of Quebec. Well, he ditched, he ditched the Nordiques, didn't he? He sure did, my friend. He, uh... He was actually quite racist. Do you think, though, in the end, that whole situation was better? Matt Sundin is a hell of a player. Well, no, because they got Forsberg. And Forsberg. Yeah. yeah. Both. Well, or was it Forsberg only? No, it was, for, it was, it was Forsberg because yeah, they right. traded uh, Sundin for Wendell. Yeah, that's it. Wendy Clark. But imagine if you had Sundin and Forsberg. Oh, epic. But Forsberg was a... But then you would have had Sackick as well. Joe Sackick. What a player. I mean, both of them together. And Forsberg was a tremendous force. Yeah. And you know what really upsets me is that the Nordique sold to Colorado. And this is when, again, back to Goulet. Goulet played for many years there. In, in the early 79, I think it was, when the Nordiques became the Nordiques. And, and in 19, 
93, I think it was, 94, 93, 94 season, uh, Colorado won the cup. 94, uh, 95, 96. 95, 96, yeah. my bad. And, but they won the cup just a year after they moved. Yeah. So that first year, bang. Same year. Yeah, yeah man. Unbelievable. Uh, it, it helped that uh, they got Patrick Wild traded to them. But the funny story is, and this goes back around to my niece, her father, when he got married, the Stanley Cup came to his wedding. Really? Yeah. From that 96 season? Yeah, that's season. when he got married. And, uh, and my dad was there, and, you know, he kissed the cup and held it and, and shook hands with uh, Michel, Michel Goulet, number 16, tremendous player. It was awesome. See, like, I went to the Hockey Hall of Fame in, t- in Toronto, and I touched the cup. You did? I did. Did you have gloves on? No, but I'm I'm not gonna. I think my time has passed. Oh, I don't I don't think I'm gonna make it. Joe Dirt, come on! Buddy. I, t- I don't think I'm gonna make it, so I don't think I'm gonna ever win it. So I jinx it. No, oh, I don't I think so. No. I don't think so. Okay. But oh. people were like, "Oh, you shouldn't be touching it. You're not gonna. You've jinxed it." I was like, "Jinx what?" <laughs> <laughs> fair comment. Fair comment, Joe Dirt. It's a good place, though, the Hockey Hall of Fame. It's a beautiful place. Gretzky's got a few memorabilia there, doesn't he? Just a few. Just a few. I think, I believe, that Conor McDavid. The great when, it's, when it's all said and done, he'll have... The second great one. Yeah. Because there was the great one, and then the second great one's coming. And he's, uh, he's a tremendous player, isn't he? Here we go. Uh, the Toe Dragons in their zone, passing it to each other, the defenseman coming out. Need to score. Breaking out. Still only just down by one. Oh, Ooh, nice feed. No one there to receive. It's Messi at the blue line. See, I mean, right there, that was a rub off. Very similar to the, oh, the Polosov one. But yeah, because it wasn't a big loud bang. It wasn't a call. But you want that little bit of... I mean, Trapper's looking a bit like a Gar Snow. That's what I reckon. Oh, Gar Snow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got the oversized gear. The big shoulder pads. Yeah, man. I think he's, uh, I think he's doubled in size. I mean, that's twice the Trapper that I know. Yeah. And I don't think he's lost weight, but I don't think he's that big either. No, he's, he's got a big chest protector on there. He sure does. Oh, shot at loose puck in front, cleared, nicely cleared by Blake. That's what you get when you have a ice black. D man there just on your team. Yeah. Makes it a lot easier. Just making it happen. So when we, we came up against the pylons kinda of looked around a minute and went So they've got two lines of basically inside oh. child players. And also the snipe. And we've got Joe Dirt. <laughs> Joe Dirt. As well as some amazing players, Tim McKay and yes, of course. Sean Dickinson. But you've been eliminated. I feel like our depth was not as deep as the other teams. You've been eliminated, though. Right? We lost to the Dragons, yeah. You did, yeah. Was it sad? Uh, I wasn't here for the, the final game, unfortunately. Well, I had to go to a wedding. That's part of the reason, possibly. Which is, you know, I thought if, we'd be, if I was there, we may have been able to push it to five, but. Oh, he's, he was cocked, but he did not release. Polosov. Oh, pass in front, Somerville just chips Somerville, it. Somerville skating hard. And it's Polosov there. Oh, not so stiff. Oh, he gets, gets the puck back. Gets it back again. He's relentless. Shot on and... The Russian. Canada with the save and freeze for a whistle. Under nine minutes to go. In, in the third period. Toe Dragons out and shooting the pylons 21 to 13. But just can't beat Chubba. He's a stone wall. I think he's Garth Snow reincarnated. Here we go, breakaway. Here we go. Can he stop it? Shot oh. off the post. There was a doorbell. He rang the doorbell and the puck did not go in. Well, he beat Chubba, but he couldn't beat the post. No, he could not. The post was too hard. It's not even a shot on goal. No. Does not count. No. So Garth Snow was a great goalie for Philadelphia. He was, yep. And I remember one game where it was a bit controversial. 
he'd come up with these massive shoulder pads and oh, shoulder equipment, whatever. And the, the referee came out with a tape to measure the size of it. And that became like a bit of a controversial thing in the NHL, in history. And well, they were basically square across. They were. They, yeah, yeah, they weren't like, form-fitting. I don't know if you know Goldorak. Does that ring a bell to you or not? There was a show back in the 80s. Goldorak. Yeah. Goldorak, yeah. Goldorak the Great. And it was this, this dude. It was a bit like Transformers, to be honest. Kind of like um, Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Or was it a ver- No, robot? no, it was, it was an anime type right. thing. Yeah, yeah. It was Japanese. And, uh, but it was translated in French, so I don't know what it was in English. I didn't grow up as an English person. Was it like five tigers joining together? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good, uh, that's okay. a good start, you know. Park into the neutral zone. McDonald, rink wide pass to Atwell, who brings it in. Poke checked away. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Goldorak, right? So, I don't know what it was called. Yeah, it was called the Goldorak in English, yeah. So, Garth Snow was basically Goldorak. Yeah, he was. He was He was one hell of a goalie. And then he used to, like, let go of his, of his hand and his, you know, whatever. He was tremendous. And I think that, uh, I think that Jan Chaba is trying to imitate or emulate Garth Snow. Really is tonight. Yeah, he was in those those Flyers teams of the late nineties of yeah, post Eric Lindros te- and post textall. Yeah, Lindros, John Leclerc. That's right, John Leclerc, tremendous. Michael Canadian. Michael Renberg, Legion of Doom. Oh, yeah, there buddy. was a line. Renberg. And then Scott Stevens just the machine does what Scott Stevens does and hits people with their head down coming across the middle. That man. That man ruined a lot of good hockey players' careers. Well, my favorite player, Paul Correa. Oh, yes, of course. He missed the Olympics because of it. Missed a lot of game time after he was... To be fair, he quit after that. Yeah, well, he, yeah, he, he decided he didn't want to play anymore if people were... He picked up surfing. And his kids never touched the ice. Nah. Ever. And he's never been on the ice since. And he doesn't speak of it either. No, he, him and the and the Ducks had a bit of a falling out. He was Korea done. Paul Korea, Korea done. Yeah, he was a good player though. He was a tremendous hockey player. I still I still remember him rattling in center ice on the blue line when he got take, taken out by Stevens. It was a tremendous hit. It was. And then he head came, down. Thanks came, for coming. Came back and then um, scored the yeah, game. And the but he doesn't remember that. No. One of the dangers of the game. Now the other, the other injury he had was um, Gary Suter hit him with a cross check in the face. That was just nasty. Prior to the Olympics, they had ninety eight right. Olympics. That's right in uh, Nagano, if I remember rightly. That's right, where the Canadian team lost in the shootout to. We don't talk che- about that. <laughs> Czechoslovakia, or Czech Republic would have Czech been. Czech Republic, Dominic Hasek. Yeah. If I remember. While Wayne Gretzky sat on the bench. Again, very sad. <laughs> like I can't, yeah, I can't, yeah. In the Canadian history, uh, the stories that went on in that in that tournament. Oh, shot! Oh, what a save! Straight into Chuba. Straight into the Garth Snow chest protector. Yeah, into the sign that says "I'm a pylon." Now, did you have um? You were one of the founding fathers of the VHL. Sure was. So, did you have any kind of um? Credence into the name creation of each teams, or were you yes, the sure did. you're the Castors creator? Well, Castor is one of them. Uh, we sort of decided that we needed to have French and English divisions, just you know, to keep it Canadian. And so we created, uh, you know, these teams that had French names and, and, and so forth. Um, and Les Pilons, yep, as an example. Uh, then we had Les Castors which is a French name for beaver. Oh, someone's lost a the bucket. There we go. It's going to oh. get messy now. Yeah. A bit of frustration. The boys are getting frustrated. Like we said, the chippiness is going to turn into more chippiness. I think it's the uniforms. It's a little bit fiery. 
Well, it's the New Zealand Fire Service that have sponsored this game that have um, brought the heat, and the players have also brought the heat. I think so. It's a combined heat, therefore combustion can occur, and there's plenty of oxygen. Oh, a lot of oxygen here. Yes, sir. So this is a huge moment in the game with a That's power good. play for the Toe Dragons, down by one goal. 3.41 left in the third period. You're absolutely right. This is a nail-biter in the game. Do they, do they pull the goalie now? Well, that's a good question. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't pull the goalie. Well, I don't know, Canada is a hell of a goalie. What, just move him up to the blue line? Well, just get him ready, you know, depending on where the, I suppose the uh, the face-off will be taking place in the, uh, in the, in the uh, pylon zone. Pylons in, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe, maybe do it, but it's risky. It's risky. There's a lot of thinking going on on the bench, that's for sure. The boys are talking, trying to figure out what the best strategy is going to be. I think... The referees are calling the, the captains for a chat. I think to beat Chubba, you're going to... He, if he sees it, he's going to stop it. Well, I think to beat him, you have to hurt him. Oh, you reckon? One way so or the just, other. What, send someone... Well, we'll just put crashing into the goalie. Big T-bone to the nugget normally, you know. <laughs> so shoot it as nuts. The nugget. Oh, right, the head, right. No, the the hel other nugget. The helmet, the, yeah, helmet, right. the helmet. The refs are having a, a chat now with the boys. and it's, Calm down, calm down, I think is what he's saying. Yeah, there's there's a couple of very experienced you know, inside out child players here just... Been told off. Yeah. <laughs> like schoolboys. Oh, yeah, okay, sweet ass, yep, sure. Chebble. I don't think that chat is going to change anything. I don't think so either. The <laughs> intensity of the game has certainly increased. No. Three minutes 41 left in the third period. Yep. If you tuned in on the live stream, do not leave for the next three minutes and 41 seconds because this is going to be an intense period of hockey. Face off win Canada, by the Dragons. Canada is still sticking to his goal. Oh, oh, good keep at the blue line. Oh. Good keep at the blue line. Now just control it. Is he Pass it oh. Just forced it a little bit. Had more time to make that play. Yeah, the Dragons are going to have to re, re sit group. up here. Regroup. Atwell down the wing. Passes to warm teammate. Pulls off. Round behind the net. Looking to the point. Sit up. Puck bobbled and we're out again into the neutral zone. Under three minutes to go on the third period. Dragons down by goal on the power play with a minute to go. And again, forced back behind their own net. Atwell brings the puck up the ice. It's pretty handy. Goes one on three, turns it over and cleared. Probably hoping for a bit more support there. Yeah, no, definitely the, he was looking for uh, for a partner in, in crime. There goes a nice pass to the D to D. The boys are holding on to the puck, setting it up, going deep. Good defense on the pylons uh, end. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure right now on the... Uh, on the, on the pylons by the Toll Dragon. The pylons will be happy just to keep their puck on the inboards. Oh, oh, big shot. In front. And Chubba again. He's stonewalling him. He is. He's got snow. I reckon he's got snow tonight. <coughs> so when do you think about? Period, uh, the uh, penalty is over. Penalty is over. Back, back to five on five. Five on five. That's a back when do you think about pulling Canada? Here, and here he comes. Now. He's coming out now. Oh. And he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. Now he's feeling sh yeah, he's feeling a bit a bit vulnerable. And they've got too, too many men. men on the ice. That's a that's a classic classic mistake. So uh, Canada was coming, but he was going. Toe Dragon jumped on, was and he then coming? was he going? They didn't know, and so they put too many men on the ice. Oh, yeah, that, at that point you just got to commit to it and go. That's a miscommunication on the bench. I'd like to. 
I'd like to blame the coach for that. Poor performance by Marku there. Absolutely, for the broken ankle. I mean, sorry, the sore ankle, fella. One minute 18 to go in the third period. This is very intense, uh, everyone. Hope you're uh, watching intensely. Hope you haven't got anything cooking or anything. You could have a gas fire coming soon because you won't be leaving the television. Good battle by him. One minute six. Well, we're going to have a face-off in the uh, Tall Dragon zone. Kennedy is poised in the goal. And uh, Polosov with the puck. Just throwing it around on the blue. Oh, they got out of the zone. That was, that was almost in and out, but in and out. But not in and out. Last minute of play, la dernière minute de jeu, en troisième période. Can you also do the three stars? And, um, la première étoile, the first star. <laughs> of course, buddy. As if you're at the... Uh, the announcer of Montreal. The yeah. Coliseum. In the Forum. Oh, the Forum, the that's forum. right. The Coliseum was in Quebec. The Nordiques we talked about all night. That's probably why you came up with that. I did have the Nordiques on the mind. You did. I know you did. Here come the Dragons, 23 seconds to go. Looking to get it deep. <sighs> Just a bounce off. Again, chip down to Chavo and he'll freeze it. Smart play. He's a hell of a goalie. I mean, seriously, he's all Gar Snow tonight. Full, oh, and Canada's coming. He's upset. Canada's upset, man. 15 seconds. They're going to put more boys on the ice. Desperation. If they could even this out, it would be one tremendous play, to be fair. You need a face-off win. I mean, the rebarb of Polisov wins it, though. Get the puck on the net. Up. I reckon there's going to be a good stick Four or slash here. And Just wide. Game over. That'll do it. Game over. Pylons take game one of the BHL finals 1-0. It wasn't quite as dominant as the game we played. No, no. The uh, the Donkeys was much more dominating performance than this one. Like we said, a battle of two 90s goalies. That's right. It was. It was tremendous. Kennedy's got smiles on his face. I don't know why, but uh, but he played a good game, to be honest. He did. He did. And he knows He knows they haven't lost the series. No. Game Just one. one game? Game one. Yeah. So game two will be uh, Thursday night? Next week. This oh, week, this, this, Thursday? This, this Thursday, yeah, oh, for both okay. FHL and BHL. Right. Well, I hope you do know that because you you are playing. I do, I do know that. I I know I was playing, but I didn't realize the BHL <laughs> was, you know, the big show, the big show was on on, on Thursday oh, night. That's big show every night, as well as the the FHL. That's the big shows are. Well, okay, I'll <laughs> take your word for it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this evening, um, for both games. No worries. And it, was, it was great to, to have a chat you know, yeah, about no, things. Th I think we took a good trip down memory lane. There was some good uh, 90s hockey chat. Nordics good chat. Yeah, good Nordics. Yeah, the Nordics were tremendous, to be honest. Yeah, good uniforms. They were. Uh, yeah, they were. Great uniforms. I Baby like blue. It. Yeah, buddy. And the big N, you know. Well, the N with the hockey stick. Yeah, buddy. That's well done, eh? That was yeah. well thought of. Simple. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh... The stream will be back up on Thursday night. Stay tuned to the Hockey House Facebook page uh, for notifications and links and everything. Uh, thank you to the New Zealand Fire Service for bringing you this coverage tonight. Remember, check your smoke alarms. Daylight savings this weekend. That's right. Good time to, to do that. That's right, it is. It's promoted that way as well. It is, yeah. Mm. And if you have any questions about fires and or uh, you know best practice... Do uh, tune in to their website. Yep. The fire department's website, you know, the fire service website. In Inzfire.co.nz, I believe it is. That's correct. It is. Or just Google fire. But when in doubt, look after your family. That's what we're talking about, eh? That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Right. Thanks for joining us. See you Thursday. <laughs>